Hey, Matt Boggs here, and today I wanna to give you five steps for creating relationship closure. Now, you may have been in a situation where you're dating someone, it's a good relationship, and then all of a sudden, they just disappear. Now, maybe they had the courtesy of leaving you like a goodbye note, but oftentimes it happens where they just up and vanish. This is someone you're dating and you're like, what the hell? Like, are they dead? And you're checking, like you're calling them, they won't call you back. You're like, okay, and you check their social media and they're around, they're posting on Instagram, they're posting on Facebook, and they just vanish, they just like disappear. That can be an excruciating experience. I have been there, I completely understand this. You wake up in the morning and your mind just thinks about them. You're thinking about them a thousand times a day. Everybody you're talking to, you're like, hey, what's up with this person? Like, what's going on? It's like dominating your conversations. You want to get some sort of explanation. Like, what did I do? What did I do wrong? What mistake did I make? Like, why are we not talking anymore? Every time your phone rings, you're like, oh my God, is that them? Get your phone out and you're like, damn it, it's just my best friend. Hello, right? Like every text you get, you're hoping it's them because you wanna know what's up, you want, and by this time, you know, maybe a few weeks have gone by, you know the relationship is done, but you want some closure, you wanna know why did they just up and bail, what did you do wrong, how can you get closure? So in this video, I'm gonna give you five steps that you can take for creating closure. Notice I didn't say get closure. Because when you have a conversation with someone and you talk about why they don't want to be with you, what you did, what they did, it's easy to have closure, right? The tough part is when they're not around to have closure, when they don't give you the opportunity to have that closing conversations, how can you still create closure for yourself? So step number one is to realize that time does not create closure. Yes, time does help heal wounds, but time alone is not going to create the closure. There's actually action that you have to take. Otherwise, you're just sweeping the feelings that you have, the experiences that you have, the memories you have, you're sweeping them under the rug, and it will definitely come back to bite you in the ass the next relationship that you have. So if there are things that you can do, what is it that you can do to help create this closure? This is step number two. Step number two is to claim your closure. Now, what does that mean? Claim your closure means to recognize that you actually have power over the closure and that closure doesn't come from him. A lot of people think that closure is in his power, that you have to know why he did what he did before you can get closure, or you have to know or have him tell you what you did wrong before you can have any reconciliation about it. Actually, that's false. You can actually claim your own closure because closure doesn't come from an explanation or a reason. Closure is actually an experience that you have, an experience that you create for yourself. Because there's no saying that even if he does give you the explanation, it's gonna be a good one. There's no saying that even if he does tell you what you did wrong, that you'll actually agree with him. None of that creates the closure. The closure is actually created within, and it's three experiences. It's the experience of peace, it's the experience of release, and it's the experience of possibility and a new hope for yourself. And this takes us to step number three, which is how do we create peace? Peace is actually a byproduct of the practice of forgiveness. So ask yourself this question, what do I need to forgive in myself to help me feel more peace? Because a lot of times what we'll do is we'll start thinking about mistakes that we made and ways that we screwed it up and we'll criticize and condemn ourselves. So ask the question, what do I need to forgive in myself that will help me feel peace and the second question is, what do I need to forgive in him? What behaviors or actions do I need to forgive in him to help me feel at peace? This takes me to step number four, which is release. Now release comes from gleaning the gold, learning the lesson of any given situation and releasing the rest. And so the question is, what lessons can I learn from this experience, right? When was it that I didn't listen to my intuition? Or when did I yield my standards or boundaries? Or how did I not show up in a way that I knew I should be showing up? Or what, what did I do well that I can celebrate in this circumstance? What lessons can I learn and how can I grow from this situation and then release the rest? Once you get that lesson, the reason why that's so important is because oftentimes there's a fear that if we don't get the lesson, then we're gonna experience the same thing again. 
And it's a horrible experience to be abandoned and just to have someone cut out with zero explanation. But when you learn the lesson, when you glean the gold, you're able to set yourself up for a different result in the future. And this brings me to step number five, which is creating the experience of possibility and hope. So what generates possibility and hope? That's when you wish the other person well, when you wish them a life filled with love, a life filled with joy, and you wish that same thing for yourself. So it's a private prayer in your mind, in your heart. Send them a warm beam of wishing them well, a warm beam of love, a warm beam of, you know what? We weren't right for each other, but I hope that something amazing happens for you in your life, and I hope the same thing for me. That when you enter into that practice, you actually open yourself up for new possibilities in your life. So when you feel yourself getting sucked back into the vortex of that drama, just decline that and say, you know what, I'm gonna practice these five steps and it will release more peace in your life, you release the drama, and you'll create more possibility for yourself to move forward. So I hope that this serves you in expanding the love in your life. Please post a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts, your experiences. If you've ever gone through this in your life, post a comment below this video. If you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you get subscribed so you can get the latest and greatest videos. And as always, there's a link in the description of this video for a resource that will help you expand the love in your life. So click that link, check it out, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much for watching.